Shut up and sit down. Welcome back, everyone. Episode three for the Resolute MXB Track Builder Helper. We are going through recreating the example track for MX bikes. Uh, something I forgot to show you in the last episode, um, you know, when you, you set all of your, your texture layers up here and you actually hit the right project files button, this, all of your, all of your settings here are saved in a project file inside of your, inside of your project right here in this example, TRK file. That's where all the settings for your, your project are set. But when you hit that right project files, it's going to write all the files that are necessary. So for instance, we worked on our texture layers. All of that gets written to the track.hmf file that's in your project folder. So if we take a look at that, um, you will see that, you know, it wrote your height map information here, uh, your scale and the number of texture layers that we had. So we had six and then it, you know, it wrote out everything that we needed. Here's one with the 3D grass. So it makes sure that everything is written correctly. You're not going to be missing a curly brace somewhere or you're not going to have a space uh, in the name of a layer that will mess you up. And it's those small little things that throw new track builders for a loop sometimes. So this app, it helps you with that. Make sure that these files are written correctly. Um, but if you ever do find something that's not written correctly uh you know it doesn't mx bikes doesn't always give an error so but if you find something that's written wrong from my application let me know in in my discord and we'll we'll get it fixed right away all right so part three of this video series we are going to go ahead and take a look at the materials tab uh the materials tab is these are the physical materials, your sand, soil, grass, compact soil, asphalt, rock. Those are the actual physical materials that your bikes wear through on your track, create the ruts, uh, the different traction, traction parameters, uh, et cetera. Um, so what we are going to do, let me just show you real quick. So in classic MXB track building, you would be working in your THT file. And when you hit the right project file and you have materials, it's going to write it to your THT file and you're going to have your material layers. So material layer zero, again, that's your very bottom layer. Um, again, there is no thickness on it. Uh, the game would ignore that anyways. And my app ignores it. It won't write that out as well. Uh, that's your bottom layer. Uh, it can't go any, any lower than that when the uh, deformation will just keep deforming through that layer. But anyways, those are what we are going to be writing from this materials tab. So if you're familiar with the THT, that's what the materials tab is doing. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's take a look. Let's see that first layer. So I'm just going to do the same thing we did for the textures. Um, the first layer was a compact soil. So here's all the different material types that you can choose. Um, I kind of put them there. They're not really in order of softness. Um, sand is probably your softest material. Um, it wears the quickest, uh, deforms the quickest. Then you would have your soft soil, soil, compact soil. Um, then we're into the gravel, grass, rock, asphalt, and concrete. And uh, your thickness and your mask. Um, again, it's the same thing. Uh, we would select a mask if we had one. Again, for, for layer zero, a mask is ignored because you can't mask your, you need to have a material across your whole height map on the bottom layer. Uh, but let's just, uh, again, show you that uh, if we accidentally don't select a valid mask, we're going to select the texture. Uh, it's going to tell us we need, we need an alpha channel uh, because that's where your mask should be in the alpha channel of, of a image file. Um, so that, Basically, let's add another layer. Uh, our second on it would be a soft soil. And this one also had a thickness of 0 0.1. Uh, that's what the example track had. There was no mask on it. Add another one. You know what? I think I... Material layer 0 was actually compact soil. And I actually, I edited the wrong one. That was 
again, thickness is going to be ignored on, on the, uh, layer zero. Layer one is soil. That was 0 0.1. Soft soil was layer three. That was also 0 0.1. So again, you just keep building up, add as many layers as you want. If you want to move layers, go ahead and do that. You can move it to the bottom. Um, that is really easy compared to the, the textures tab, which had a lot more things for your shaders, uh, a lot more, a lot more information you have to know on that one. You notice over here we have also an import from file. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just import these from the existing example track. So if you were again working on a track and or you had an existing track that you really liked the um you liked your texture, not your texture layer, sorry, your material layer setup that you had. Uh, you could just go and, and reuse that on all your tracks, uh, at least as a base, a base start. So what you would do when you use the import from file, uh, you need to select a valid THT file. Go ahead and open that. And uh, there you go. All the material layers have been imported correctly. See our thicknesses, our mask set for these top three. And that is pretty much it for the material layer. Let's take a look at our... Uh, let's go ahead and write our project file. We will see then our THT um, got written. And just to match it up to the, uh, this is the THT from the example track. Uh, looks exactly the same. Here we have some scenes that we'll import those later. Uh, but looks looks good uh, again they had their masks in the root of the project file we have ours in our mask folder so that's why that looks different but everything looks the same now you will notice we have our build trh file uh, available let's go ahead and do that and it is done already so if we look up here Start in the TRH, finish the TRH build. Uh, so now, now that you have the TRH, let's go over to our build folder. We now have our TRH. Your TRH file um, is your MX bikes. That is the all the collisions, the height map, the actual collisions file. Um, that the that the that the game uses um, to build your map, and again, just just think of it as your collisions file um, with your materials, the physical properties, not what you're seeing, but what you're feeling, um, in the physics uh, layer of the game. Um, so now, though, once we have this, once we have our th file, we have our build, uh, we have our map. I'm going to build my map again just to make sure it's built. But this is where you can now design your center line because uh, that would be our next step so over here building our map so now we would just come into here we would go to our track editor all right and it would open up and we would just load our track trh that we just completed building can zoom out a little bit to see your full track. I just mouse wheel and there we go. Usually I would come draw a wireframe so I could see easier. Um, and then what we would do, um, you're on your main center line. Uh, I'm not going to draw a full center line for you guys. Uh, that's, that's a topic for another video. Um, also I think Nico has a video on his YouTube channel. Check it out. Uh, but what you would do is you just right click, uh, add a segment. It's going to be a straight you're going to start with and it's way down here in this corner you can drag it up to where you need it just right click on it or yeah right click and i'm sorry left click on that base drag it 
switch it, drag it over here, curve, get around this corner. Forget which way the track goes, probably straight. Anyways, that's what you would be doing, drawing your center lines. So I'm just going to show you, let's just load up a, uh, the center lines that were in the example track. So we have a, the main center line. So this is the main center line. Uh, you can see it goes around there and then there is also, and then what you can do, this tool is what it, what it is for is you can go center line and you can merge it. Once you merge this to the, uh, turns red, that means it's actually merged into your TRH file. If you happen to regenerate your TRH file, well, then you have to uh, remerge it. So you do not have to open this track editor to merge this manually every time. That's what the, there was a batch file in the example track to merge it. It calls this through a command line. Uh, so if we look at that, that's all you have to do. Uh, we need to set our center line. So, sorry, jump back. What you would do is then you would come in here and you would go save as, and you would save your two center lines, your main and your start. If you were using a start, again, the main is the only one that's required for MX bikes. So that's what you would do. Um, and then what would happen is now, now that we have them saved out, you got to make sure to save them after you modify them, you want to save them. Uh, and then we'd come over here and we would select our, Let's select both of these. Let's select our main one. So let's pretend we just created it in track editor and we're going to move it over. And now we have it selected here and we're also going to select our start one to our start one. And there we go. Now you can see a lot more buttons activated. We have our merge center lines. The merge center lines is going to run that track editor through the command line and it's going to put this down. So this isn't our latest version. So let's go ahead and load our, this again, and we should see the start center line pop up in red here. And there we go. So we can see the start center line was merged in correctly. So again, you don't have to come in here and merge it. You can do it the first time if you want, when you're designing your, your center line, but when you are, actively editing your files and doing all of that. You can just come in here and manually merge this. Right. So let's get a couple files that we need out of the example track. Uh, to be able to actually even run our, our uh, track in MX bikes proper um, to test it. So the first thing we're going to need is the gate.edf. That's the starting gate uh, object. We need that. And we're going to need the RDF file. Uh, the RDF file is the race data. Um, we're just going to copy this one because this one is out of the actual uh, example track. We're just going to copy that over into our uh, into our folder. Now this, the gate, you can just leave it called gate. Dot .edf and the RDF file though, we need to change it to example track uh, to match the name of ours. And if we go back into track editor, uh, we can actually then, we want to go to view race data. This little window pops up and I always make sure MX bikes is selected since uh, these tools work with all of Pibozo's games and we are going to load the example track RDF, which we just copied over. And so if we see this, uh, the race data, the RDF file has the pits all selected where the gates are 30 second board over here. Um, and checkpoints, these, uh, purple -ish, uh, those are checkpoint lines for cuts and these are the splits and the start finish line is right here. Uh, and then those are the pit boards. Um, as you finish a lap. So anyways, that's just a real a brief thing. I'm not going to go into how you set all of this up. Yeah, it's very, to me, it's intuitive. Uh, you can just mess around and you see everything happening on the screen. Um, if you have any questions, you can post it up in the Discord.
but that's it. That's all we needed for our, our race data. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Again, like I said, you, we now have uh, we, we already merged and now we have some different items that activated. We have a build all. So this build all button, um, if your track is valid, what this will do now is it'll run this button, run your map, run your TRH and do your center lines all in one go in one button click. And so when you click that, uh, it's building all the project files. Building your map. And it says the track build was complete. So this, this prompt here is, is notified down here. So if you didn't want to be notified when it's complete, just click that. If your track builds relatively fast, you probably want to mark that as false. Um, if you have a track that takes a long time or an hour, five hours, like the Krakenberg did, uh, you might want to know when it's done. So just, uh, you can click that, turn it on or off. Copy mods to copy to the mods on build all. So when you use this build all, um, it runs this copy to mods folder if this is selected. And what that's going to do is copy to the folder that you selected. Uh, let me go over to the project settings. So it's going to copy this example track to our motocross folder in my MX bikes uh, tracks mods folder. Uh, so you can you can change that if you want, but that's where it's going to put it. Um, so if we go to copy to mods folder manually, and then we go over to find it. Look at our MX bikes mods folder tracks, motocross. We should see example track right there. So only the files we needed were there. And if we start up. Uh, MX bikes. And now you'll have to restart MX bikes to get this to load your track the first time, uh, the first time it copied. If you were actively working on it and you build your track files and you copy to your mods folder, you don't have to close MX bikes totally. Um, if you're updating your track, just go back to the main menu and then it'll update and then you can uh, reload it from the menu. So here we see it in our motocross uh, example track is loaded right there. And let's see if it actually will start up and run. All right. So far, so good. Uh, usually if you get here, your map is probably good. Um, your race data is probably good. Uh, if you go to your track uh, and it crashes, could be your race data is messed up. Um, too many things to think about there, but there we go. It is, uh, it is working. That's it. We have successfully got our material layers, uh, got our map built and, uh, and I'm going backwards on this track, but Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, next time we will look at uh, importing the scene objects. You know, this has a, a finish line. Um, there's another, some other objects on this track. And uh, we'll see how, how much farther we get on those other, those other tabs as well in the next video. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like, leave me some comments. Uh, let me know if you guys are using this tool or not. I uh, appreciate it. Have a good one. Uh, and we'll catch you next time.